Today I'm talking about the bottles I'm looking to hunt for the rest of 2023. What are they? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome back to the Bourbon Retriever, where I go out in the wild, hunt bourbon, and bring it back for you. Today we're going to talk about bottles I'm looking to hunt in 2023. Now these bottles are in no particular order. The first one is a bonus one because it's not going to be released in 2023, but I just felt like I had to bring it up. And it is none other than the Heaven Hill 18 year. This is following up their 17 and 20 year release. The mash bill on this one is similar to the 17. It's 78% corn, 10% rye, 12% malted barley. This is the same mash bill they use for their Elijah Craig barrel proofs and many of their other bourbons. This specific one was in the Birmheim Rickhouse location, uh, 7i, third floor. It's going to be an expensive bottle, probably around $200. If I see it, why well, buy it? Yes. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to get the 17 or the 20. Here in Virginia, they show up in the drops, but each store might get one bottle, if that. So you really have to be quick and I just have never been lucky enough. There is a place near me that's offering a bar pour, the 17 for 60 bucks. That's a little steep for me. I can't pull the trigger on that. Let me know in the comments if any of you would pull the trigger on that if I should go out this weekend and try it. Given the hype of the 17, I am looking to buy this bottle if I can. Now the next one's also from Heaven Hill. It is the William Heaven Hill 17 year. I was unlucky enough to try the 15 year that came out last year but I heard great things. I'm pretty sure it's a distillery only release. I could be wrong about that. Maybe it's Kentucky only. I know it's not here in Virginia. This one's coming at a 120 proof. It was a blend of 32 barrels. So it seems like it's gonna be a pretty small release. I don't have a price point on this, but I imagine it's also in the $200 range. Would I pay it? Probably because of the reviews I've heard about it. And I would just love to try it. Now the next one on this list comes from the Bourbon Junkies. It's the Bourbon Junkies Omen bottle. It'll be their first blend. It's in honor of their sidekick, Cookie, the cat. You can only get it through their Patreon. They said they are gonna do about a thousand bottles, so it should hopefully be a little easier to get, especially if you're in the lower tiers of their Patreon. The cool things about these labels, they're gonna change them. They're gonna be different animals. And inside each label, they have omen hidden. I'm not gonna point it out to you in this label, but give this screen a pause, check it out, see if you can find it yourself. It's a cool little treasure hunt. They haven't set a price point on it, but I know they're trying to be consumer friendly. When they did their single barrels, those are only $60 for a five year age product. So I imagine they're gonna be consumer friendly for this bottle and the price point. We don't have ages, but no matter what it is, I'll be buying it. Now, whenever they start doing picks or blends with others, like if ADHD whiskey does a pick or blend, I don't care what the price is on it, I am buying it ASAP. If you like this list, please like the content. It helps me know what to do going forward. Additionally, this is a small channel. Please subscribe. I'm hoping to get to a thousand so I can do a live stream with you guys one day. Bring on Watson, my sidekick, Golden Retriever. Now, the next ball on this list has already come out. I've heard a couple of places getting pics of it, and it is the Green River Foolproof Single Barrel. The mash bill on it is 70% corn, 21% rye, 9% malted barley. There can be a minimum of five years. And the proof points would be 119 proof. Normal bottles are about $35. They're great pours. Nothing too special about them, but for $35, it's hard to beat. Given how good the entry level bottle is, I am excited to try this at full proof. See if those flavors are a little more pronounced. See if they can get any maybe off profile barrels that bring out the notes that you enjoy more in the bottle with the added proof, the viscosity. I think these are going to be great bottles. I don't have a price point on it, but if this bottle comes in around 60 bucks, I'm going to give it a buy. And sorry if I'm constantly looking down. I have my camera here with my notes. There's a lot of facts going on here. It's hard for me to keep them memorized, but I want to give you the information I can on these bottles. Now, the next bottle on this list comes from Four Roses. It is their LE for 2023 and is celebrating their 135th anniversary. Now, the thing about this bottle that I'm most excited about is it includes the oldest blended bottle they have done yet, a 25-year age bottle. I think it comes in around 5% of the bottle. Oh, the, so the 5%, the mash bill on it, or the yeast strain is OBSV. They have a 12-year product, OESV, 35%, a 14-year-old OESK, and a 16-year OESV at 20%. They have spending this about $200. They're going to have 15,000 bottles of it. The 2022 was fantastic. The 2020, it was okay. It wasn't anything too special about it. But given the age statement on this, 
I cannot wait. And I will 100% pay $200 when I can find it. And the Virginia Drops, normally we get about three bottles for a store when they hit. And so I can get there normally in that amount of time. We'll see if I'm lucky enough this time, but fingers crossed. Next on this list is Michter's Toasted Rye. This is coming in at about $120. Proof point on this on average is about 108 proof. They are going to vary. It will be released in September. And the second barrel is a toasted, not char barrel, and it's air aged for 24 months. I love the Michter's Rye. I haven't had a chance to get any of the toasted products, but I heard great things and I'm excited if I can get a chance to buy this bottle. Especially, so I like the rye of the sweetness. If they can get a little more oak on it, I think it might be a perfect balanced rye. Next bottle on this list is hopefully an easier bottle for people to get and is the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof Sea Batch. Now there isn't a TDP label that I've seen yet for this. It is rumored and hinted by the Master Stiller that it's gonna be over 13 years old which if it is over 13, I will probably buy two of these on the spot if I find them. The only time I've seen Elijah Craig Barrel Proof over 12 years is in the Do Your Own Bourbon Experience at Hammond Hill, and those bottles are $180, $200. So to be able to get a 13 year age product for what's probably gonna be about 80 bucks, it's gonna be a must buy. And given that I'm such a Elijah Craig fanboy, this might be one of the top bottles on this list that I'm excited to get. And I'm really hoping that with the dropping of the 12 year, that they do a lot older blends. I know the B batch was younger than 12 years, but if they can come out with some batches that are 15, 16 years, oh man, I will be ecstatic. But if I had to guess, they're probably all going to stay roughly around that 12 years age mark. The next bottle on this list has already been released, Maker's Cellar Age. This is the first age dated product from Maker's. Maker's as a distillery has had the belief that you should age a bottle to taste, not to an age statement. If you are hit, always trying to hit an age statement, it's much harder to make a consistent profile. It may not be the best blend you make. Whereas if you make it to taste, you aren't hamstrung to an age statement on the barrel. If it tastes great at a younger age, go ahead and bottle it, get it ready to go. Whereas if you're stuck with the age statement, it may be perfect, but you have to let it sit a little longer and it may turn a little too oaky or might not be the balance that you're looking for. Now, given this history with makers, they have been hesitant to put any older age product out there. In their opinion, the older products get a little too much tainted oak in them and it's just not what they're looking for. With this bottle, they aged it normally up in the rick houses and then for the last couple of years, they put it down in their cellar to help it age a little slower. The makers bottle is coming at 115 proof. The price point on this is $150. That is relatively tough. It is older than a $10 per year age statement, especially from a legacy distillery. You would hope that they'd have a little bit of pricing on it. But given the reviews from Fred Minnick, I am probably going to buy this if I see it. For the average person, I would say if you're not a Maker's fanboy, probably hold off so you can find some more reviews. I know Minnick, this has been his baby for a long time. He has wanted Maker's put on age product. So you might want to find some other reviews if you can before buying it, given the price. But Minnick is always very honest in his reviews. It's just when you have that much emotional attachment to something, it's really hard from personal experience to separate it. Next bottle on this list, Parker's Heritage Heavy Char Rye. This bottle is coming in at 10 years, 125 proof. The mash bill is mostly rye with 39% corn and 10% malt. This is the same mash bill they use for the Pikesville, their Rittenhouse, and the Elijah Craig rye. I am, I have to say, a little disappointed. I was hoping it's either a higher age statement for the rye or something a little more unique than just putting out an older rye product. But that said, I'm still excited for it. When ryes get up that 10 year age statement, they get really sweet. I imagine with this heavy char, you're gonna get some of that oak into the rye to help mellow it out even more. And it might turn into this well-balanced rye. I know the last rye they released a couple years ago was a hitter. I was able to try it, but if I see this bottle on the shelf, I am going to go for it. Now, the last bottle on this list is the JD Twice Barreled Rye. I have to say, this must be the year of the rise because there have been a plethora of ryes on this list, especially from legacy distilleries. This Jack Daniels comes in at 100 proof. Uh, I was hoping a little more, especially from the Heritage series. They have been absolute hitters lately. The higher proof points, a lot of the Koi Hills were hazmat level. So they're bringing this down a little bit. See how that goes. I trust Jack. They know what they're doing. 
Uh, they have much better palates than I'm sure than I do. The mash bill on it is 70% rye, 18% corn, 12% malted barley. It's aged for five years and then another two in the heavy char barrels. Amazon P is $75, which you love. It might be one of the cheapest bottles on this list. Jack does the best at MSRP pricing. It is a luggage distillery, but they could price these higher if they wanted to, but I love how they keep these at a reasonable price MSRP. So the previous rye that Jack Daniels put on the Heritage, people fell in love with. They then released the single barrel barrel proof ryes, which I am a huge fan of. If this Jack Daniels twice barreled rye is anything close to the Jack Daniels single barrel rye, I will be in love. For $75, I'm going to buy this. Definitely see a trend with all these ryes too. Michter's, Parker's, and JD are toasting or double barreling them which i think is what you want to do with more expensive rice that toasting or charring helps get more of the oak notes and helps balance out the rice spices so i'm excited for all these blends maybe if i'm lucky enough to get all three we can do a blind at the end of the year to see which has the best rye so that's my list i'm hunting for 2023 i could have included the pappies you know btac but everyone's trying to hunt those leave below what you're hunting in 2023 that way others in the community including myself can see if we can try to hunt those bottles too. And until next time, cheers. Mm -hmm.